Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we welcome everyone to our study of the nectar of devotion at the level of Bhakti Shastri and today is lesson number eight. Is it? Nine. Lesson nine, yes. Yes. We're going on, yeah? Lesson number nine, wow. Okay, so we'll Go to the PowerPoint presentation. Did you all get it? Did you see it? Have you looked over it? All right, lesson 9. This is chapters 11 to 14 we're going to be looking at. So we're going to... Oh, let me see just a minute. What happened? This is what we covered yesterday, right? Okay, this has to be looked at. This is one of the verses which you're supposed to memorize, right? Do you know this verse? Lila Avatar, have you learned this verse yet? Um, not yet. What about Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Can you recite the verse for us? Okay. Ata Shri Krishna Namadi Nabhavi Grayam Indraya Seva Mukhi Hijivandu Swayam Evas Purayada Translation? Spurat Yada Spurat Yada Yes, translation? Translation? Because Krishna's form, uh, quality, pastance, it is the etc. Etc. Okay. Yeah. Are all on the absolute platform. Material material senses cannot therefore appreciate them when a conditional soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the Lord's holy name and test the uh, remnants of the Lord's food, the tongue is purified and the one grand grandeur, grandeurly comes to understand who Krishna really is. Yes. So this is one of the memorization verses for this course, right? I think you have to memorize this verse. So you should all know it. It's an important verse, often quoted. Sevan Mukhi Hi Jiva Adao. Jiva Adao means begins, the Jiva is the tongue. Adao, the beginning, it begins with the tongue. So Sevan, Seva Mukhi. Our devotional service begins with the tongue. So he renders service by using his tongue. We use the tongue to chant and to taste the prasada. So this way the tongue is purified and gradually we, we come to, to understand who is Krishna. All right. So make note of that verse.
Right, here's a, this is another verse. Who's going to chant for us? Meilin? Yes. Anashatasha Vaishayam Yataham Upayin Jataha Near Banda Krishna Sapande Yuktang Varagyan Uchate. Translation. When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accept anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated about possessiveness. Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Do you recognize this place? Right? Do you know this place? Govardhan Parvata. Yeah. Govardhan. This is the Go Giri, Go Giri Govardhan, right? Giri Raj Govardhan. This is Giri Raj Govardhan, yes. Okay. And then we spoke about attitudes to suffering. We talked about how we would tolerate and take shelter of Krishna in difficulties. That sufferings help us to become more Krishna conscious. Okay, we'll go ahead. What is this? Nectar of Devotion, paragraph 1 of chapter 10. Right? Chapter 13. Oh, chapter 13, is it? Oh, okay. Can you read it? You want to read it? Yes, yes. I just... Paragraph 1. Okay. <clears throat> Rupa Goswami has, has stated that five, uh, five kinds of devotional activities, namely reciting and Mathura, worshipping the deity of the, law, of the Lord, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, serving our devotee and chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra are so potent that a small attachment for any one of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy even even in a neophyte. Is that the chat? Is that it? It's the first paragraph. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. So we're going to look at these things today. First of all, residing in Mathura. <coughs> Mathura or any holy place. It can be a, a, any holy place, just like Mayapur is different from Mathura, a little different. You know, Mayapur over here in Bengal and Mathura is there. And so there are different holy places. So residing in a holy place is very good for Krishna consciousness. Mathura Mandala is... Huh? Maharaj, we can, can we say that residing at any ISKCON temple is equivalent? Yes, also. ISKCON temples are also holy places. The ISKCON temple is like the embassy for the spiritual world. Right? The embassy of the spiritual world. So you go to the embassy, Indian embassy, American embassy, it's the same, it's their, the country. So our Krishna conscious centers are embassies of the spiritual world. So it's good to live in a holy place because there will be good association, there will be regular chanting and so on. Very nice. And then? Worshipping the deity, Sri Murtir Angri Sevane Pritaha. The Murti, the deity, worshipping the deity. Now, worshipping the deity is not, you may be able to go on the altar and actually dress the deities and do, offer the arti, or you simply go and see the deities. Going to see the deities is also worshipping the deity. We go to see the deity, we offer obeisances, and we chant for the pleasure of the deity. This is all part of deity worship program. Right? Prabhupada liked, devo liked to see all the devotees come to worship the deity. And then, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Bhagavadartikas Vado. 
Bhagavatar Asvado. Hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Every morning we have Srimad Bhagavatam classes. We want to try to hear regularly Srimad Bhagavatam. It's very helpful for us. You know, you come for the class here, it's good, but try to also hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day it goes on, every day in the temple, it's very good for us to hear. And then, Sri Nam Sankirtanam, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Kirtan, we need that kind of program also regularly. Chanting the holy name, taking part in the kirtan. It's very good for our heart and to make our mind peaceful. Your mind may not be very peaceful, you may, be, you may feel very disturbed in your mind. So go and chant, go and join the Sankirtan. Every day they have the chanting party here in Mayapur, which goes around the temple. Many cities in, in all over the world, our devotees go out regularly every day. They go out regularly every day to chant the holy name. So we want you to also get involved in going out to see the deities, and going out to chant the holy name also. This is our business as devotees. And then the fifth thing, serving a devotee. To give service to a, a devotee. Mm. Sajati yash. Yashaya Snigda Sri Bhagavad Bhakta Sangho. Sri Bhagavad Bhakta Sangho. Right? So we should try to give service for the devotees. How can we serve a devotee? Well, you can go and help serve prasadam when the devotees are taking prasadam, serve them. Mm, try to do some, try to find some. It's not easy. Devotees don't like people to serve them. A devotee doesn't like to have to take service, he likes to give service. But we don't like to have to receive service. So it's difficult to serve a devotee. People won't let you serve them. They feel, no, no, I can't let you serve me, no, no, I, I can't take service from you. So it's difficult to get to serve a devotee, but it's very important. We won't get to go back to Godhead unless we serve a devotee. Unless we do service for the devotees, Krishna won't let us go back to Godhead. So it's really important. So these are the five angas, the panch anga. Panch means eye, anga, limb, five limbs of devotion. Angas is the limbs, and pancha, five. So these five types of devotional service are very potent. And if even just one of them will give us perfection in our life. And we have all of these activities in the morning program. If you come for the morning program, there will be seeing the deity, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna. And there will be a chance also to serve the devotee. Maybe you can give the devotee a cushion or a mat to sit on the floor. Maybe you have to give him a glass of water. So here's a quote. Srila Prabhupada said, these practices are so potent that a small attachment for any of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy even in a neophyte. Right? Well, we're all neophytes. We're all neophytes, we're trying to progress. So we want to practice these five items. It's very important, very good for us. And these five activities are so potent that any of these five, any of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy. Devotional ecstasy means bhava. Even in a neophyte, you can come to the bhava stage. Devotional ecstasy refers to bhava-bhakti. Neophyte in this in context refers to one with weak attachment. Thus, even a neophyte devotee with weak attachment to Krishna 
can quickly achieve bhava bhakti by practicing any one of these five most potent items. So practicing any one of these five can give us bhava bhakti. Bhava bhakti is really advanced, you know. You really have to be up there, a good devotee, to come to that level, bhava bhakti. All right? The power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to understand. Even without faith in them, a person who is offenseless can awaken his dormant love of Krishna simply by being a little connected with them. So often we, we, you know, we may be doing these things, we may not have a lot of faith. We may not have so much faith in what we're doing. But if we just do it without any offense, then we can get a great result, a very good result. So this is the power of these five things. So we're going to ask you now, we want you to do a little exp ex ex experience, we want to hear about your experience. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, I had a question uh, regarding that. <clears throat> yes. It was, it was mentioned that if, if someone uh, performs any of these five, uh, then he can advance. But the condition is that he should be offenseless. Yes. So, and even the, it is mentioned that even the neophyte can advance. So, but Maharaj, we also know that uh, those who are neophyte, they have tendency to commit offenses. Yes. So how then, how these two things, you know, because we have to be offenseless, but then uh, there is tendency to be, to commit offenses. So how to reconcile this? Well, somebody is a neophyte, it doesn't mean they'll be offensive. They're innocent. Right? Okay, okay. They're innocent. Somebody is a neophyte, it doesn't mean, somebody is offen offensive, that's, that's, that's not good, you know, just like, uh, just like Ajamil, Ajamila was sinful. Mm. You know, in the story of Ajamila, the Brahmin, he was sinful. You know, he did a lot of sinful things, but he wasn't offensive. Yes, ma'am. But Daksha, Daksha, he was offensive. Oh, yes. Daksha was in offensive to Lord Shiva, right? And he got, so he got problems. So, uh, so people may be neophyte, it doesn't mean they're going to be offensive. They should be submissive, they should be innocent, they should be willing to hear and to take instruction. That's okay. what's required, right? No, yeah, somebody's a neophyte, doesn't, they, don't, they, won't, they, don't, they won't be offensive. If they're offensive, then of course we won't waste our time with trying to instruct them. Mm -hmm. But if they're simply, if they, they, you know, they're submissive and they're willing to hear, now they, they don't, they may not, of course, they won't have much faith because they're neophyte, they're new people. Mm -hmm. But, but okay, we understand that. We want them to take part in the activity. And by taking part in the activities, they will develop faith. Yes, sir. The more they take part in the activities, the more they will have faith and they will appreciate the activity. And they will understand, yeah, this activity is very powerful. So they, de they develop their faith. Simply it takes time. One has to be patient and we have to train people. People need education, they need training, they need guidance. Good association, good instruction. And that way they will become strong in their Krishna consciousness. In the beginning they may not be, they, they, in the beginning of course they're not going to be strong. They're going to be weak and they're going to have challenges with their faith. They will be thinking, am I doing the right thing? Should I do this? Maybe I should have become a Christian. Maybe I should have went somewhere else. 
maybe I'm wasting my time. You know, they'll think like that, these different thoughts will come in the mind when one is a new devotee. And so you have to be, uh, you have to be enthusiastic, we have to try to encourage them and try to develop their faith. Yes, please. So they get faith by association. So if we have faith, and with, then we can help to convince them, to give them faith. That's the idea. No offense. All right, now what we want you to do, how many groups have we got? We've got two groups of men and two groups of ladies, right? Yes, four groups. Right, four groups. Well, so we've got five practices. So which particular, of the five activities, which one would you like to work with? You have to pick one of the five. Who would like to? Who would like to do, no, anybody like to do number one, living in Mathura, the holy place? Any preferences? If you don't have any preferences, then I'll just give you one to do. Anybody has any preference, one particular item you really want to do? No? Okay. Maybe chanting our group then. Who is that? Jiva? Elias. Then you want and to... You want to... Normally I'm with Bhaktivedanta Sahaya Nasinga in one group, maybe if you agree to. And, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Vibhu Chaitanya and Bhaktivedanta Sahaya Nasinga, you're going to do chanting Hare Krishna? Yes, Maharaj, I'm fine with anything. Sorry? I'm fine with anything. Oh, okay. Have you got also that Bhakta, the Bhakta Elias there today? Are you three people or two people? Yeah, yeah. Hi, boy. All of us are here. Three, yeah? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, what about Sobhamai uh, Keshavi Mariji? Which one would you like to yes. do, Mariji? Um, if everybody in my group is okay, uh, we can take up the fifth one, serving a devotee. Okay. All right, we'll let you um, take that one, fifth one, serving the devotee. And Sudarshan Prabhu, which one do you like to do? Uh, worshipping the deity. Okay, worshipping the deity. And then the marriages, Chinese marriages, you can choose between. I think you should do residing in Mathura. Okay? Since you're, so because you're all living in Mayapur, so you can tell about the benefits, right? So, what you have to do, reflect upon how you have personally experienced the potency of this Anga, citing a memorable experience in your life. Please prepare to make a presentation of your testimony to the entire class. All right? So, this is what you have to do. All right. So give you, I'll give you five minutes or more. You, you can discuss how to do that and how you will do it. Okay, Sudarshan Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. You can close, open the groups, put the let the okay. go in their group.
Okay, everyone's back just about. So, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, would you like to go first? Uh, Elias Prabhu was going to present from our group. Okay, Elias. Hello, everyone. And four points uh, collected from our groups. And the first point was uh, chanting in the morning. But if we chant in the morning, then the whole things we do over the day go much faster. And yeah. That's the point. <laughs> then uh, we had also chanting with senior devotees that then there is, I don't know if you chant next to some good chanters, then we also chant better. I, I forgot the name. So we were mention mentioning some, but anyway. Uh, yeah, this was the second point. Then that if we are in a curtain with, I don't know, very good curtain years, or we were mentioning Japataka Salim Kanama Maharaj, if then it's somehow another curtain and it feel there's everything and then the, the general public like it also to chant and i know from here some persons that they come of course they like curtain so much the temple and they don't have heard about the philosophy but they like the curtain so much and because of this they joined this one yeah that's it I wanted to know more about what you personally experienced. You, ha you know, that's a, the, the question. How have you personally experienced this? You know, you're mentioning some points which you say will be good. You know, chanting in the morning and chanting with senior devotees. For me, I can say something to morning. For if I chant, for example, in the morning sixty rounds and finish, then. This was at school time, for example, and if I thought, okay, I will chant now. Do you, do you live in the temple? Anything. Do you live in a temple? No, no, I live at home, next to a temple. Next to a temple? Yeah. So, I, so I walk. You have a job, eh? 15 minutes and with a car, 3 minutes. Sorry? I think really close, we are, there's a forest between, maybe, actually we are neighbors. And then, and at my school time, I don't was chanting the 60 rounds every day, but some. And then if I chanted, I thought I would chant them in the evening. Then I did my whole day the work, the things, and then I chanted. And if I chanted in the morning and then do the things after, I think I needed maybe the half time for doing the things or something like this. It goes much, much, much faster. And that's maybe not pure chanting if you do it out of the reason to chant in the morning to do the things faster. But. <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> so you 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 do the your chanting. You feel your chanting is more. Uh, it's quicker when you do it in the morning. No, no. If I chant in the morning, then all the other, I don't know. For example, if I chant in the morning and then do my exercises for school, then I need I don't know thirty minutes. And if I do first my exercises for school and chant then, then I need for the exercises one hour or something. What exercise? For school, I don't know, maths or geography or chemics or some normal oh, things. You're, oh, you're a teacher, is it? Yeah, as a soon. <laughs> Sorry? Now I'm a studying teacher, but I will be a teacher in future. Oh, you're going to become a teacher, I see. You're training to be a teacher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, well, could I add on to uh, yeah. with my personal experience? Yes, please. Um, so, like, I, it was uh, 2019, Kirtan Mela, I believe. And uh, it was Jai Pataka Maharaj uh, singing in the Kirtan Mela. It was, it, it was like a surprise since his name was not on the list of uh, devotees that sing. And uh, that was in my experience the most blissful kirtan i've i've ever had and it was really loud and the devotees were in ecstasy and then it was also during that time it uh, there's those pictures of mahaprabhu crying yes and yes. that was i think the most blissful i felt chanting the names of the lord okay 
Jai. Okay, that was that's a memorable kirtan. Yeah, Jai Pataka Swami chanted at the kirtan mela, and the, at that time they had pictures of the Panchatattva, and it's like Lord Chaitanya was crying, tears coming from his eyes, as Jai Pataka Maharaj was leading the kirtan. All right, that's a good experience. Yes. Anybody else? About Kirt chanting Hare Krishna? Any comments on this? I could uh, add on to my point earlier. It's covered a little bit. Yeah. My point. My point was in the Japa time in the temple. Throughout my life, I used to go sometimes, and then there's many senior devotees there, right? Many marriages sometimes there. So then we get the opportunity to chant with them, and uh, it just feels very different. The whole mood. Everybody in the temple is chanting. And then you're chanting with some senior devotees. Sometimes they share, share their personal realizations on chanting. Sometimes you can go on japa walks with them and then they can also share some more realizations. Uh -huh. It felt very serene and very motivating to chant. Okay. And then also the last point about the general public. In Harinam recently, Jivanath Prabhu invites us for Harinam on Sundays. And then the locals, they get super hyped up by the chanting. They all join in, dancing, chanting, very crazy. But then they're super attracted to the holy name without knowing much philosophy. But then Jivanath Prabhu brings out the books to try to distribute, and then they all disappear. <laughs> so that sort of showed like the, their attraction to the holy name somehow. Yeah, the holy name's all attractive, right? Well, books, maybe if you give the books away free, you could do that, you know. People are sometimes just afraid about how much money we want for the books. Maybe that's why they go away. Uh, sometimes if you tell people, you know, just give whatever you like, you don't have to give any fixed amount. You can make it like that. So. Sometimes they just, people just worry that how much we want for the books, the books are too expensive. Okay, thank you very much Prabhu, so it was very interesting to hear about that, chanting Hare Krishna. And now we will hear from Shobha Mai, Mataji Keshavi, about serving devotee. As, is, 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 San, is Sanja Mataji there today? Yes, Maharaj. And all the three of us discussed and all, each one of us had um, uh, I have something to share, so with your permission, each oh, one of us. Can... Okay, yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, so I'll go first, Maharaj. Um, so the Vaishnava Seva or serving a devotee has been a very, very blissful experience for me. And um, uh, in here in Singapore, uh, we have opportunities for that. And um, especially during uh, the COVID times, where it was very difficult to. Um, you know, have a personal association with devotees and where we had no uh, physical programs, everything went online. So we had a very interesting uh, way of serving devotees. So what uh, uh, one of the Matajis uh, suggested was um, for one year, one person would serve another devotee without letting the other devotee know that, you know, uh, who is serving them. So it's something like a secret Santa kind of a thing. So uh, that was very interesting. And uh, we, I got to serve one very senior Pataji. And it was, um, we had to come up with some ways to uh, do that without letting that person know that, you know, we are kind of doing the service. So uh, what we did was, what I did was I uh, made a, I created a separate uh, email ID without, uh, without my name in it. And I kept sending her some quotes and, um, you know, uh, messages about devotional service on a regular basis and uh, also um, send her some prasadam. So uh, uh, we used to cook some nice prasadam and once in a while, once a month or once uh, twice a month like that for about a year i kept sending her prasadam without letting her know that it was coming from me so it, it the whole experience was very beautiful uh, more so because i had to ensure that i kept it a secret from her otherwise she would have reciprocated and the whole purpose of uh, serving would not be there so that was very very blissful and finally after one year when she finally came to know that you know it was me uh, she was 
very very grateful and that experience was also very nice and of course here um, we've had we have had the opportunity to serve um, uh, to host um, uh, his holiness uh, kavi chandra maharaj uh, once when we visited over here and at that time we had also called some other devotees and uh, regularly we have some programs over here maharaj by maharaj's uh, mercy and we get a chance to serve devotees that is a wonderful experience and uh, although it is very hectic during that time uh, that bliss is very very uh, very memorable maharaj so i just wanted to share that are, are you the ishun group is it are you with haladara Uh, uh, no, Maharaj. Uh, this is Gita Reading Society Gita under the Reading. care of his friends, oh. um, uh, Devaki Nandan. Okay, Prabhu. Gita Reading Society, JRS. Yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Okay. You have uh, you have uh, recently you have given a class also. <laughs> you were sharing um, uh, Prabhupada's memories, I think, some time back during. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that it's be okay. associated with that, Maharaj. Okay, so let's hear from uh, and S- Sanjya Mataji. Sanjya Man. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, what I uh, wanted to share is that um, my husband is a devotee of our initiated devotee by Lokanat Maharaj, and he's actually the yeah the so we are uh, we are hosting Maharaj every once a year, but yeah now due to COVID he uh, didn't come. But normally he comes every year, every two years, and uh, when he comes, it's a very nice experience to have Maharaj and his his, um, his servants here. And yeah, but Shubham Maharaj also said it's very hectic, but the experience is very nice. It's very blissful, and actually everything goes very smoothly. Um, you're very excited and in stress, but the chanting and reading everything goes very easy whenever maharaj leaves again the void is there you feel really the missing of the energy and uh, krishna's mercy you feel it's it's like gone um, whenever he is here it's really 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 nice so it's a really nice opportunity how to yeah that we get the mercy to serve the devotees and that's in that way And do you cook for Maharaj when he comes there? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, so I I cook and together with uh, other Matajis who are also uh, devout uh, disciples of Maharaj, mm-hmm. we all cook for Maharaj. So it's just like morning. Yes, a diet, special diet. So it's all is uh, yeah. How many days does he stay usually? Usually around uh, the longest was like a week. And, but normally it's around four to five days. Well, four to five days, just in that day hike. Yes, and then then we uh, we uh, travel with Maharaj also. So we bring Maharaj to Amsterdam, to Rotterdam, and most of the times we also also go to Radadish, that's in Belgium. So we uh, we travel along with Maharaj to. Uh, Last time uh, we went to Germany as well, so we tried to uh, um, surf in that way also. Oh, to, oh, that's all. To, oh, that's the whole one week or five days is the, all those places. Um, yeah, sometimes it's a week. Sometimes uh, last time we went to Germany, it was around two weeks. We were with Maharaj. Yes. He he went around Germany or just went to one place. Uh, to one place he went to uh well two places he went to um i forgot the place actually but it's uh abentoyer is one that there's a temple there go, oh, okay <laughs> yes uh, and then uh there was one more place uh which the, i forgot so where the nishinga dev temple is where the temple of lord nishinga no, no not there It's a small center. Uh, Maybe in Cologne one? No, also not Cologne. Uh, Hamburg? I, sorry, I forgot. But uh, okay. it was a nice temple there as well. I was a disciple of Maharaj. So we went to two places in Germany. And from Radharish we went to, the, to, uh, to Abenteuer. But he was based in your home, was it? Yes, yeah. So he... he, he He was based at in our home. Yes. Mm, nice. 
Okay, thank you, Madhuji. And now, Gayatri Madhuji? Uh, Naraini, Naraini, not Gayatri. Naraini Madhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> Maharaj, so uh, uh, last year, uh, when COVID was at its peak in India, it was quite uh, difficult to travel at that time. But uh, we got the news that uh, my our Shiksha Guru is just not keeping well. Uh, she had COVID like uh, two weeks ago. And now uh, she was having lots of problems because she, uh, she was having many comorbidities. So we decided to leave right away to Mayapur. And my friend and I, so uh, there was quite difficult at home and I was working at that time, but still uh, somehow, we felt that we might not see her, so we just hurried, we packed her bags, and we even got in the wrong train, but somehow we reached Mayapur, and <laughs> after that we uh, served Mataji for about uh, two weeks. At the time, I was thinking uh, I, uh, I've gone crazy, as I'd left everything, and I just went the moment we came to know about the news. So we served her for two weeks, and after after a month, uh, somehow we got the mercy, and after that we've been residing in Mayapur. Uh, and your Shiksha Guru recovered? Uh, yes, 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 Maharaj. She so recovered after that. Good. She's very happy, and uh, she got well after that. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Nice examples about serving devotee, memorable experiences. Very good. All right, who's next? Who did we not hear from? Worshipping the deity, Sudarshan. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, actually I am very uh, new to this Krishna consciousness. I am a product of, you can say, Covid, the first uh, thing. So uh, when uh, there was nothing, no job for me, so I started visit, coming to temple and, and I got attached to, <coughs> I got attached to Prabhupada and uh, obviously uh, Radha Madhav. So what happened is uh, somehow I got the chance of uh, dressing up Prabhupada every morning. <coughs> every morning and it's been almost a year now I'm dressing up Prabhupada and uh, it's an awesome experience right now like every day morning when I uh, means uh, dress up Prabhupada I, I iron the clothes for Prabhupada and I do everything his dressing and everything and the very good experience what I want to share is sometimes when I'm depressed or I want something or something is missing in my life or something I just keep on dressing Prabhupada and if I just anyway just start thinking about that like I'm depressed of this and that and immediately by that same day the whole depression goes off or something comes some solution comes like yesterday I was I was telling uh, regarding that uh, money which I couldn't pay, uh, like the food money. And that I was just, uh, I was just dressing Prabhupada and I was just thinking, where can I get that money? How do I pay? And exactly that same day I got the money somewhere and that everything happens and it happens on a regular basis, not one day or two days. And there is one more experience like uh, if you know about Siliguri temple, Siliguri temple, the main temple is in the center and uh, uh, side there are small other temples also like there is Jagannath temple, uh, there, there is Ram, Ram Lakshman Shita uh, Hanuanji temple, Baradev temple, then there is Nishingadev temple, small temples are there surrounding the main temple. So what happens is there was one, uh, one uh, devotee who was serving Ram Lakshman Shita temple. And uh, the day we got our initiation, uh, first initiation, uh, that is on 18th of last month, my initiation. And on that uh, two days later, he got his second initiation and he was transferred to uh, the main, main temple. And the, the main head pujari, head pujari came and told me that <coughs> right now, like he is being shifted, shifted to that main temple, now you will be take, taking care of the Ram Mandir in the morning, like dressing up Ram Sita, Lakshman and the whole thing he told me. And I said, yeah, I have no experience. And then uh, then he told, okay, this, this uh, Prabhu will teach you for three days and on the third day, on fourth day onwards, you can do it yourself. Very good. So the first day of his training, when I was being trained, he told me how to put the pin this way, how to put the... 
how to do everything dressing he was just teaching me suddenly the head pujari came and said ki come uh, you, uh, your your training is done now you can do it all yourself i know i am confident on you you can do it on yourself let him come with me to the main temple and i was in a shock how do i will i do and from that i just started doing and uh, it's been almost one month now almost one month and i'm daily i'm dressing up ram lakshman sita and it is also a fantastic experience because uh, there is one more thing i would, i have never done pagri for myself not even for dt nag not even for myself so i had to do pagri for uh, ram ram ji and lakshman ji and that pagri came out awesome and in fact i'm uh, even uh, guru maharaj guru maharaj also saw in uh, he took the photograph and he also saw the uh, pagri and he uh, posted his uh, this uh, ram lakshman's photo also in his app just day before yesterday was it was also there in his app and and they are also same thing like in ram lakshman mandir also uh, where i i don't know how to dress up how to put this and that and we have a time limit also we have to finish it in uh, two hours one and a half hours and the and things are happening and things are happening and this is a, such a awesome experience dressing up bhagwan and right now i am so busy in the morning just after the mangal aarti finishes i run and get prabhupad's dress dress up prabhupad and by 6:30 i again run to that temple and then dress up and by 8 o'clock because by say 8 o'clock i need to finish up everything by 7:45 i need to do bhog and everything and by 8 o'clock i have to finish so and the, everything is happening smoothly now and it's a awesome experience i am having and after that i finish that i have my prasadam and i just run for the this class it's what is that pagri it's what you put on the head oh the tarban 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 okay tarban Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. You got any experience, Krishna and Sashi, Sashi Prabhu? Did you worship the deity? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Once upon a time, I was in Sankirtan bus for a few days, and then there were Gornitas. So I was given service of doing archan for them in the morning. So I, so should I? Mean, I don't know Maharaj, whether this is my imagination or what. Should I say? Go ahead. Okay, Maharaj. So what happened? I was given time that I must finish everything by eight fifteen, within one and one hour and fifteen minutes. So I was given training, and then I started doing. So I was missed a lot of rush because I had very little time. Within that time, I had to complete it. So, what Miss Doctor? Sometimes what happens is that uh, I there was so when you do the archan, so and when there is one step when you are supposed to wipe the body of the Lord with the kerchief. So and for that purpose you need to go very close to the deity, very close to the deity. So once for when uh, after sometimes when uh, I was just doing that the wiping, so I was getting a smell of lotuses. So, but there was no lotus around. So I was wondering from where this uh, smell is coming. <laughs> so I was wondering, but then because there was time shortage, so I I never thought about that much. I just quickly completed my service and then went away. And it was happening for a long time. So then once and what happens is that Maharaj, I used to read Krishna book every day before going to sleep. So once again, once what happened, I came across the section of this Rasa dance. and uh, so what happened when krishna left the rasa dance and then again came back and he began dancing with the gopis and then what happened after some time gopi became tired so and they were perspiring so krishna what he did by his lotus hand he tried to wipe out their pers- perspiration and when he put his hand on their face so his hand we call lotus hand so from that that hand very beautiful fragrance of lotus flower and by that as smell there are they this their their tiredness that went away they felt relief from their tiredness they were very refreshed 
So I did not understand at that time, Mr. And when I read, something came in my mind that uh, I remember this uh, smell of lotus somewhere. But then at that time, I did not understand. I could, I could not recall, recall. Because I thought that because in my childhood, I used to go to the ponds in my village. In my village, I used to go to pond to take bath. And in that pond, there were many lotuses. So I thought that maybe I had experience of that lotus. So, <laughs> and when next day, again, I went to Darshan, again, the same thing happened. So then I immediately reconnected. So what I, I, what I understood, Maharaj, this deities, they are not uh, simply some statue, some matter. They are directly, the Lord said, they are standing there to receive our service. They are ready to reciprocate. This is what I understood, Maharaj. Okay, deity was reciprocating with you. Okay, you had a personal relationship. Yes, Maharaj. All right, thank you. So, then we hear from the, our three uh, ladies from China about residing in a holy place. Yes, Maharaj. I will try to share something. Okay, uh, Sitala. I remember um, 2019, I visited Shida um, Mayapur only for two months. The last five days, I just uh, got one seva for Jagannath, Rajput Jagannath temple. I can clean all the temple and the Jagannath's dress and the kitchen. I think from morning to afternoon, 3 p.m. After that, I feel so tired, but I have so many happiness also. And then I lie down um, behind the Jagannath Bhadi Subhadra, that time they are uh, sleeping. I just uh, uh, like uh, talking with friends. I said, my dear Jagannath, if I can stay in Shida Mayapur and doing the seva for you all time, that is how wonderful. I just, uh, from my heart, I say to Jagannath, then after, I think before I leave from Mayapur to China, then this is mercy from Guru Day. So I got the one news, I was married with my Babaji. <laughs> then uh, they sang it later to Guru Day. Say I can uh, marry the in Mayapur. Then after that, I think this is a dream. So when I back to China, I really dream to my Papaji. He's he uh, comes to my dream at night time. He say I come to your life only bring you to Mayapur and the service Jagana. <sighs> then after that, I just confirm with my Papaji. I say if I marry with you. So what should I do in Mayapur? He said, you only stay in home doing seva for Jagana and the service devotee. So I think Mayapur is Chintamani down. Oh, wonderful. And also, and also, but when I come to Mayapur, really stay here and talk with him more, I feel it confirms because he's Bengali, I'm Chinese. So our culture is so different. So, I just pray to me, I say, I really don't know. I say, I'm also very young. I don't know I can marry now or not. So I pray to me, very sincerely. Then next day, Pangajang Prabhu, he comes to me. And he, he asked me that Prabhuji married with one Chinese girl. Then I just look at my Prabhuji because that time, Pangajang Prabhu asked me about my Prabhuji. Then I say, I think this is Nisha Dev's mercy because I never told Pangajang Prabhu about me and my Prabhuji's uh, this marriage things. But he come to me and ask me about my Prabhuji. So I say, actually, Guru Maharaj already give us the blessing, but I don't know what should I do. He say, he's a good person. And you married with him, you just keep center with Krishna and Guru. Then everything become fine. Then I just, that day also is my birthday. So I say, uh, Mayapu, I can get so many sadhu sangha, like oh. Pangajang, Prabhu, Nisha, Maharaj. Before in China, we waiting one year, two year, waiting for Nisha Maharaj come to our city. We cry, <laughs> we sit later, we so many things we try, but it's very difficult, he's busy. But in Mayapur, we all, all, every Sunday, we can have Sunday program, listening Maharaj's class, and now we can learn Bhakti Sastra course. Every day we can listen in class from Maharaj. 
Okay, okay, enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, very good. So let's go ahead. We have to go on now. Let's learning experience number two. Partners. Oh, how will we do this? Anyway, partners, you're th group of three. It's okay. Select a partner. Review 64 Angas. You know the 64 items of devotional service in chapter 6? And I've identified practices which, if improved, would significantly help you practice Krishna consciousness. Discuss the areas in which you need to improve and how you plan to do this with your partner. Right? 64 Angas. Which one? Pick one which you need to improve. Right? You have to pick one. So each of you, each of you devotees, you can pick one thing which you need to improve and then tell us how you're going to improve it. You understand? We want to know which one you're going, maybe my chanting, my japa is not good. Okay, how am I going to improve it? I'm going to chant more rounds every day or something like that. You know, that's, that's just one thing. You can say something else. But look at the six, 64 items in chapter 6 and pick one of them which you need to improve. And then tell us how you're going to improve it. Right? I'll give you five minutes. Okay, Mahesh. Everyone, you just, each person do their own thing. Each one person pick one item. And then we'll hear from you. Actually, you don't need five minutes. I'll give you three minutes. Thank <laughs> you. I don't know why I back. I don't know how to back to break room. You don't know how to come back? Yeah, just because you didn't finish your talk, I think I already leave the meeting to break room. But the way I back, I don't know how to back to How to do? do? Uh -oh. So. Okay, I just can't agree with Sudha Sampo. Well, I can hear you. I can still hear you. That's the main thing. Yeah, because I didn't go to group one. I, I, I already went, but I think you, you not finished talking again, I back. So now I cannot back to room one. No problem. Okay. Okay, actually, Maharaj, you will go for me and that's a Jagna temple for wedding? Yes. Uh, because my papa just said he will send the car with me and to take you to temp Jagna temple because this wedding my pop would you organize for them today i don't know yeah i don't know this is possible or not yeah i'm supposed to go i just go for five minutes you know i'm not going to stay long i have to come back i have things to do anyway the wedding okay. the wedding will be finished when we just go to give blessings yeah, I also, my papa just asked me to give the gift then back. And then come back, eh? Yes, yeah. maybe, I don't know. I, I, but the goal, I will go with you and uh, we have one car and driver. Okay. Mm. okay I tried to contact this with us and <laughs> All right. Does everybody pick something? Little avatar. No. Little avatar. No, 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 only me is here. Everybody in back room. Nobody can hear you. Only me. Oh, really? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I have to close the, close the groups then.
All right. And so, Gayatri, which one are you going to? Uh, not Gayatri. Uh, uh, what is that again? Naraini. Naraini, which one are you go? Which item are you going to improve? She's not yet. She's not yet back to oh, the room. Oh, she's not. Okay. What about Shobha Mai Keshavi then, Manaji? What yeah. I will go for uh, one should live in a sacred place like Mathura, Vrindavan or Dwaraka. I'm really missing that because uh, we've been planning even even uh, for a vacation also we are not able to go because of this COVID times. Last time we planned to go to Mayapur and a lot of other places uh, in and around there but then COVID came up so that is something which is uh, pending for a long time. So hopefully by Krishna's mercy, we should be able to do that post our response. So before COVID, were you coming every year to Mayapur? We used to go to Vrindavan Maharaj, Mayapur uh, only a couple of times. Oh. But uh, Kathik time, we used to go to Vrindavan and my Prabhu used to go. Somehow I was not very regular, but I have the desire because something or the other kids' responsibilities. So... Your husband yeah, can get desire, time off. Of, your husband can get away from work so long to spend a month in Kartik. Not a month, Maharaj. During Kartik, he would he would go for one week to ten days. Oh, very good. And, yes, very nice. Yeah. And he has gone for different yatras, but uh, I couldn't make it for various other reasons. So <laughs> that is my desire. Oh, okay. He likes to go to the holy places, huh? Yes, yes Maharaj. It's very. Maybe I will get fifty percent of the benefit. <laughs> <laughs> it should take you. All right. What about um, who else is in the group? Sanjay Mataji. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I was thinking I should go more on Sankirtan. Um, actually, we there is a group that goes every month, and yeah, again due to. Uh, several responsibilities, the kids and other things. I've not been able to join the group, but the desire is really there to join them. So um, I have to plan, make time to actually go also with them to uh, on Sankirtan. And I think the kids will also like that. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I'll uh, have to make a plan better to join them. And then hack? Um, actually, this, there's a Sanketan party and they go uh, around Holland. So they, they go to seven, uh, seven different cities every time they visit a different city. And then, yeah, they do Sanketan in that city. Nice. Have we got any full-time devotees there in Holland now? Uh, yes, we have. Well, we used to have like a Brahmachari ashram, but that's no longer there. We just have, I think we have one Prabhu, a senior devotee, Jankinath Prabhu is there. He's a uh, full-time devotee. Where? Otherwise, Where is he? He's in, uh, he's in The Hague and also sometimes also in Amsterdam. Do we have a de deity worship going on regularly in Amsterdam? Yes, Maharaj. There's a, there's a full time. There is a temple operation there. Yes. Amsterdam's the main place, is it? Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So we're actually could... planning to have a temple also in the Hague. So they're building now a temple. <laughs> really? They're building. Yes, mercy. Yes, Maharaj. Wow, wonderful. They bought land and put up a building. Yes, the land is already there, and uh, there uh, actually the Lakshmi is missing. So, uh, but uh, they're collecting now and building the the foundation is already there, and actually uh, the Anantashes is also waiting for his temple. So the Pumi Puja was already done, also. Mm, wonderful. Okay, very nice to know. Yes. And what about? Um, Naraini? Hare uh, Krishna Maharaj, uh, right now my main focus is uh, to get back to Mayapur as soon as possible because as soon as I reach in Mayapur, automatically everything, everything will uh, 
take place properly. Like my, uh, like my sadhana and all, it, uh, it will automatically improve. And here I'm not able to do it properly, so I just want to get back as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So come back to my poor and get back into your sadhana. <laughs> okay, good. All right, let's hear from Sudarshan Prabhu. Which item did you pick? Like, uh, uh, I have been regularly hear uh, Bhagavatam, uh, Bhagavatam mainly. Here because pre previously I used to re regularly uh, attend the class, but due to my seva, I just can't attend the classes right now because it time clashes with the Bhagavatam class. And I am not getting even the time to read Bhagavatam regularly. So that's the main concern. I need to focus on Bhagavatam because it will take a long time for me to finish. There's a I'm Bengali just... class every morning there, Siliguri? Yes, yes, Bengali class. Mm -hmm. Bengali class every day. In the temple room? In, in the temple, exactly. Okay, good. All right, Shashi Khan, Shashi Khan Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I, cho I chose Maharaj uh, becoming initiated by spiritual master and learning how to discharge your service from him. So, because Maharaj, uh, before coming to Krishna consciousness, uh, I, mean, so I tried to understand the, uh, the, the living, uh, the, I mean, so the way of living the outside people, but it was very difficult. So then when I came in touch with Prabhupada books and the culture which Prabhupada has given, so I, I appreciated it and I picked it up and then I read Prabhupada books very fast. I read um, many books and uh, I learned the philosophy Maharaj, but then actually they are only in theory right now in my head. So they have not come into practical. So I, I so and Prabhupada also mentioned several times the importance of getting initiated and learning from a spiritual master. So for that reason Maharaj, I really want to uh, prepare myself to, for getting initiated. I'm already on the, in the queue a long time and I'm just waiting for the time to manifest that. Okay. Day, okay, very good. Very good. All right, so uh, Lila Avatar Maharaji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, I, I need to improve in reading Papa's books. I plan to uh, read the Srimad Bhagavatam 41 pages every day. Oh, very good. Oh, okay. Wish you good luck. After you finish Bhakti Shastri, first, first you finish Bhakti Shastri. Yes. And then you can read Thank it. Thank you. All right. Maylin. Hare Krishna. Uh, for me, I think the first step is to get uh, uh, initiation from, uh, from special master. Because, uh, um, because uh, after I have the uh, Bhakti Shastri class, I realized without the special master's mercy, it's very difficult to improve in the Krishna consciousness. So, and uh, I'm also, uh, because the Bhakti Shastri, I'm also thinking I'm ready, I'm ready for the get uh, initiation. But after this class, I feel I was so falling, uh, so falling down. I feel I were, I have no quali uh, qualification to get the initiation. So I was thinking I want to improve my sadhana and the more regular table to to do the sadhana and the more focus to uh, sitting uh, sitting around the good quality to chanting and to to do the worship, the details, and the reading books, and uh, yeah, more, more focus on, on the, the sadhana. This okay, is, uh, yeah. very good. Yes. yes, do more sadhana. All right, what about Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu? Um, I, for me, it was the one, I think it was number 12, one must sing, and uh, I definitely need to improve upon that because I am really, uh, shy when it comes to singing, since I'm not confident about it at all. And so I think I have to improve upon that. Okay, so you can sing when, you, when you're in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> you can start singing. There's so many times you can sing. Just have to think about it. 
All right. Thank you, Prabhu. What about Vib uh, Bhakta Bhatsal? Thank you so much. Uh, till the last second, I was still looking through so many points. There are so many things I can improve on. So I ended up picking the third one, obeying the orders of the spiritual master with faith and devotion. Since I feel like it covers pretty much all of devotional service, obeying the spiritual master. Recently, he was partic Marge was ex particularly emphasizing doing the Bhakti course. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And that covers a lot as well. It covers sadhana, it covers chanting, it covers hearing, it covers association with devotees. And yeah, that's okay. what happened. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Back to Elias. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> no, I could also choose many, many of these points, but I liked uh, point 42 one should associate with devotees who are considered more advanced. Because, I don't know, normally if I see such people, then I think so, oh no, I don't code them, I will disturb them, and they have something better to do. But then after a while, okay, I like it to see them, but after a while I think so, oh no, no, better I have to go somewhere else. And in Shumat Bhagavatam, I have written some time ago that we should be happy if we see more advanced devotees, and here now again, and then I think, okay, maybe I will try to get closer to them and so things. But let's see, because I think always I will disturb them. But anyway, <laughs> let's see what will happen. You are in Norway, is it? Where? Which country are you in? Germany. Oh, you're in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Which city? In Abenteuer. Also next to, I don't know, next to Frankfurt, one and a half hours. Okay. Uh, and how many devotees are there in the city? It's a very small village, but uh, in the temple maybe 30 and here around maybe 100. Oh, quite a lot of people. Yeah. And they're all Germans? Uh, in the temple, most of them are Croatian and only, we only speak English, there are so many. <laughs> but here around there, they speak all German. <laughs> A lot of Croatians. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. And, and Russian also. <laughs> and not Germans, less German. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, interesting. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. All right, did anybody we, we didn't miss anybody we missed out who didn't give? Okay, we'll go ahead. All right, everybody, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so attachment to Gyan and Vairagya, right? And so, are the processes of Jnana and Vairag unfavorable to devotional service? I think we have to read a section from Prabhupada's book there. What does it say? Nectar of Devotion, chapter 14, first, one, first three paragraphs. Yes? Sudarshan? Yes, Maharaj, reading. Reading. Chapter 14. Chapter 14, first three, first, first three paragraphs. Okay. <clears throat> Devotional qualifications. Some scholars recommend that, the, that knowledge and renunciation are important factors for for elevating oneself to devotional service. But actually, that is not a fact. Actually, the cultivation of knowledge or renunciation, which are favorable for achieving a footing in Krishna consciousness, may be accepted in begging. But ultimately, they may also come to be rejected, for devotional service is dependent on nothing rather than the sentiments or desire for such service. It requires nothing more than sincerity. It, it is the opinion of expert devotees that mental speculation and artificial austerities of yoga practice may be favorable for becoming liberated from material contamination, but then will, uh, but, but they will also make one's heart harder and harder. 
they will not help at all in the progress of devotional service. These process are therefore not favorable for entering into transcendental loving service of the Lord. Actually, Krishna consciousness, devotional service itself is the only way of advancing in devotional life. Devotional service is, absu uh, is absolute. It is both the cause and the effect. The Supreme Personality of, the Godhead, of Godhead is the cause and effect of all that be and to approach him, the absolute, the process of devotional service, which is also absolute, had to be, has to be adopted. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita by Lord himself. One can understand me only through devotional service. In the beginning, his teachings of the Gita, the Lord said to Arjun, because you are my devotee, I shall teach these secrets to you. Vedic knowledge means ultimately to understand the Supreme Lord and the process of entering into his kingdom is devotional service. That is accepted by all authentic scriptures. Mental speculators neglect the right process of devotional service and by simply trying to defeat others in the philosophical research, they fail to develop the ecstasy of devotion. Okay, okay thank you Prabhu. So here's a little section. Attachment to Gyan Vairagya. The processes of Gyan and Vairagya may be detrimental to the cultivation of devotion. It means they're not very good. They don't there can be they can be harmful to the cultivation of devotion. Rupa Goswami warns that Gyan and Vairagya can make the heart hard. A materially attached person has many emotions that impel him towards sense gratification. Vairagya involves making the heart callous and indifferent to these emotions so that, so that one won't be moved by them. So vairagya, this vairagya detachment can make our heart callous, callous and it means we, we don't care about it. If we're very callous, we're not caring, we're not compassionate, we're not very kind. We're indifferent to emotion, to, to the emotions. We won't be moved. So a materially attached person has many emotions that make him attached to sense gratification. And so vairagya is giving up all these attachments. But if, it, if the vairagya is excessive, if it's too much, then our heart will become very hard. It means we don't care about people. So bhakti, however, means to please the Lord by one's love for Him. To express such love requires a soft heart, easily moved by the Lord's name, form, qualities and activities. Gyan and Vairagya are not favourable to devotional service because they result in a hard, stoic heart. From the Waves of Devotion, pages 103-104. So we're practising Bhakti Yoga and Bhakti Yoga means to please Krishna and we please Krishna by our love. So we have to show our love to Krishna and said here, we have to have a soft heart. If our heart becomes hard, then it won't be easy to show love and care. So we want to keep the heart soft. And how to keep the heart soft? Well, we have to, we have to chant Krishna's names and hear about Krishna and serve Krishna. And if, if we separately try to practice cultivation of knowledge, jnan, and detachment from everything, vairagya, then this won't be very good for our devotional service. 
because these two things can make our heart very hard. So we have to be careful about Gyan and Vairag. Now, we are asking you, are the qualities of Gyan and Vairagya favorable to devotional service? We're talking about the attachment to Gyan and Vairagya. Now, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a verse. Maybe some of you know this verse from the first canto, the second chapter. It says, by the practice of devotional service, one automatically acquires knowledge and detachment from the world. All right? Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana Yati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chanam Jnanam Vairag Jnanam Vairag Chanantikam Right? That by doing devotional service, by doing bhakti, you automatically get Jnana and Vairagya. So are these qualities favorable to devotional service? Well, we need to have some knowledge. We do need to have some knowledge. And we said faith, right? Our, if we have the, the two things which make us advance, which can help us to advance, one was faith, the other was knowledge. And we spoke also about vairagya, that we shouldn't be too much attached, we shouldn't be too much detached. So the vairagya has to be not too much, not too little. And the gyan, yeah, we, we need gyan, we need some knowledge, but we don't have to become a big scholar. We don't want to become proud. This is the problem. If we become very attached to knowledge and detachment, we'll think, I'm a very advanced devotee, I'm very renounced, or I'm a big scholar, I know so many things. So pride is not good. Prabhupada often quoted the saying, he said, pride comes before the fall. You become proud and then you become, then you, you're so proud you give up Krishna consciousness. You think, oh, these people are, to they're so stupid, they're, they don't know anything, oh, they're so attached. And you, in that way you criticize devotees, you offend the devotees, and you go away from Krishna consciousness. So we have to be careful about Jnana and Vairagya. We need them, but we don't need too much. We don't need to, well, you have to be careful. Just don't become proud. Understand that the more you know, the more, there's so much more to know. <laughs> the, the, there's this, we say, the older you get, the more you realize there's so much more to know. We have a saying like that in Chinese. Huh? <laughs> right? That you, as you get old, older, there's more to learn. And you go on learning more and more, but you still learn. There's so much more still you never learn. There's so much more still to learn. So why? Why is it favorable and why not? Why or why not? Yes, who would like to answer? Maybe uh, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, would you like to comment on this? Yes, why would... Um, Uh, I'm not quite sure how to answer this question. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm blanked out. Okay. Uh, anybody, anybody's uh, got some comment on this? I can try, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, this uh, knowledge is required to advance in Krishna consciousness. Uh, if we, if it is used for advancing in Krishna consciousness, then it is good. But if you become proud, then that is not good. Yes. And sometimes people think, you know, I have to read, I only, I have to read, I don't have time to do any service. 
They think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so, you know, I have to read, I have to read Prabhupada's books, I have to read, I have to read, I have so many books to read. And so many more devotees have written books, you know, we have Banu Swami has written so many books, commentaries of the Acharyas translated. And you know, there's so many books by different devotees, we want to read all. I don't have time to do any service, Prabhu. Can you ask somebody else? I have to read. So, is that good? No. Yeah, we have, to, we have to do some service, right? Everyone has to do some service. You have to read, but you don't have to read all day, every day. Actually, Maharaj, Prabhupada's books are such a, uh, written in such a way that he always pushes us for service, <laughs> devotional service, Prabhupada. Yes. Not, not only, there is not only again, because I've read other books prior to reading Prabhupada's books, when I used to read some spiritual books and all, they are always with Gyan, they are always with Gyan. But Prabhupada's books are written in such a way, they, they have Gyan, and Prabhupada is telling us how should we do the service to have that Gyan and all. <clears throat> He's showing us the practical ways also. Mm, yeah, good. Yes, Prabhupada's books are certainly related to our lifestyle, and they're, the knowledge is practical. You know, some people, some people, of course, become scholars. They go to universities and they they do postgraduate studies, even and go on to do PhDs and to write articles and so on. That's good. That's nice, and, and certainly we need devotees like that. We need to have some scholarly devotees, but at the same time, the important qualification is devotional service. So we don't want to minimi minimize the importance of devotional service. The, well, we could say Gyan and Vairag is part of devotional service. Well, the, but they're secondary parts. The primary part of devotional service is hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. So that's what we give importance to the foundation of our bhakti as hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. And Gyan and Vairag, we develop these things by being devotees. In course of time, gradually, we become more detached from the material life. Certainly, as, as you get older, you become more detached. Young people, you know, we have a lot of desires and we want to do many things. But gradually, as we get older and get body aging, then you want to get renounced. You want to give up all these attachments. You want to get away from everything, from all the attachments. And so it naturally develops. And similarly, our jnana, our knowledge, because if we're hearing regularly, then gradually we're cultivating more and more knowledge. And that's the better way to do it. It's not that, oh, I'll read for a month. And then for 11 months you don't read. You know, we want, we want to be hearing and studying regularly. We make it a regular thing. And of course, when you're doing the Bhakti Shastri, you're putting a little extra time in that's required to study some things because you have to write essay and write a test and so on. But it doesn't go on all the time. When the Bhakti Shastri course is finished and then every day we have classes. We have our Bhagavatam class and it's good. Every day there, there should be periods for, there should be time every day for our reading. You should have a regular program to read Prabhupada's books, particularly Prabhupada's books. It's very important. You want to read all of Prabhupada's books and you should have a regular program to read them, to go through them. And just like Mataji said today, she's going to read 40 pages every day so that she can read all of Prabhupada's books. So it's very nice, you know. Of course, just reading the books is okay, but even better than reading them is to, to share them, to discuss with other people. Read and discuss with other people. And that way you get more realization. People may have a lot of jnana, they may not have much realization. They may not be able to apply everything. And so it's not just becoming a, a gyan. We don't just want to become a bookworm. 
And we don't just want to become a renunciate, but we want to be, we want to be devotees, cultivate our devotion, that's important. Okay, so I'll read this. Although the processes of jnana and vairagya are unfavorable to devotional service, the qualities of knowledge, namely jnana and detachment, vairagya, are necessary for devotional advancement. Without knowledge and detachment, one will be attached to the material body and tend to act for the body, not for Krishna's pleasure. So these two things are important. Jnana and vairagya are important. But you have to be careful. Don't emphasize them to the extent that you don't have any bhakti. It has to be in relation to Krishna. We have to do everything for Krishna's pleasure. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? Maharaj, I was wondering, is this a risk of uh, going, in the, uh, going in the area of becoming jnani? Is, is this with the books of Srila Prabhupada also, Maharaj? Yes. Okay. Yes, it can be Srila Prabhupada's books, and of course you can go further. When jnanis usually, they go further, they go into all the, so many books, you know. Prabhupada actually said our books are enough. He said, if you read the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the Bhagavad Gita and the Nectar of Devotion and the small books, he said that you, you, you've got enough. You don't really... No, Maharaj, my, my, question was, my question was that if we simply stick to Prabhupada books, so will that, by reading Prabhupada book also be a part knowledge, right? Oh, yes. Yes. So is that knowledge harmful? No. But I'm saying you can, people can uh, take advantage of that. They can say, oh, I'm reading Prabhupada's books, I don't have oh. time for anything else. Okay. Right? Maharaj, I, want to, I want to add one thing out here. Like, <clears throat> I know somebody who knows by heart, like Bhagavad Gita, all sloks, and he knows everything. Means he's a literary, sort of literary incarnation or something. But he hardly, I've seen it with all respect to him, that person that he hardly implements anything in his life. He may be advising others and doing, but he never implements those in that life. Is this sort of like too much jnani and not implementing that? Yes. Yes, you're right. Yes. People may know all the slokas. Yeah. They may know everything, but they don't follow anything. <laughs> right? Yeah, but we, we want to use what, it's not that you have to know a lot. This is something I heard from uh, His Holiness Hanuman Prasak Swami. He said that it's not so much that you have to know a lot, but you have to use what you know. You have to be able to use what you know. If, if you know things, but you, you don't use it, it's not very useful, is it? So what we know, we have to use in our Krishna consciousness. Okay, so here's a, a question. How can one develop jnana and vairag that is favorable to devotional service? And is it possible to acquire detachment without hardening the heart? So, who would like to answer the first question? How can one develop jnana and vairag that is favorable to devotional service? And you, well, yes. Um, by using the knowledge you gain to, uh, for devotional service and rendering it upon devotional service, and perhaps oh. also helping other devotees uh, better themselves in their devotional service. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. If we do devotional service ourselves, then naturally we will develop jnana and vairag. Jnana Vairag that is favorable to devotional service. Well, devotional service, it's, our, it's naturally, Jnana Vairag are naturally cultivated just by doing devotional service. 
but we, we don't want to lose the focus on devotional service to the extent that we become a jnani or a vairagi and we forget about bhakti. <laughs> that is the problem. So there has to be, the, we have to remember why we're doing different activities, why we're reading Bhagavad Gita and why we're being detached from material uh, sense gratification because it's in relation to Krishna. We want to act for the pleasure of Krishna. Everything is for, for Krishna's pleasure. We're not thinking about our own self, not that I want to be a big scholar, I want to be a big renouncer. No, we want to please Krishna. Our business is to give pleasure to Krishna. So that's important when we're cultivating these kind of qualities. And, and actually the, the way to cultivate these qualities, Gyan and Vairag, is simply by doing devotional service. So if we cultivate knowledge in the course of our devotional service, then it's good. Is it possible to acquire detachment without hardening the heart? Yes, it's possible. How would we do it? Yes, Maharaj, Sobhamaya. Yeah, uh, we can do this when we have um, Yukta Vairagya or utilizing everything in the service of Krishna. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I see the answer to this. Yeah, that you, we have to do everything in relation to Krishna and then you won't harden the heart. And so the same cultivating Jnana and Vairag, it has to be in relation to Krishna. So here's the verse I was speaking about from Srimad Bhagavatam, right? Then uh, Sitala, chant the verse. Okay, Maharaj. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yuga Prayujita Janayatya Suvairagyam Gyanachayad Hatukam. Yes, translation. By rendering devotional service unto the person, personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately uh, acquires. 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 Causeless knowledge and the uh, detachment from the world. Yes. Okay, that's the key verse. And here's the other verse which we were hearing from Shobhamai Keshavi Maharaji. She was telling us the re renunciation has to be in relation to Krishna. All right? Lila Avatar, chant the verse. Yes. Anna Shakatasya Vishayan Yatarham Upa Injata Near Banda Krishna Sang Bande Yogatam Varagya Uchate. When one is not attached to anything but at the same time accepts anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. Yes. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yuktam Vairagya Uchate. The renunciation has to be in relation to Krishna. That is the proper situation. We're not attached to anything, but we accept everything. We accept the jnana and the vairagya in relation to Krishna. So that is the best situation. That is yukta. That is called yukta vairagya. That vairagya means detachment and yukta means in relation to Krishna, right? Yukta vairagya, proper, mention here, proper renunciation. But there's another one, Melin Chan. <clears throat> Brahpan 
Kataya Buddha Hare Sambandi Vastuna Mumusubi Hare Diago Varakyang Bagu Katyate on the other hand, one who rejects everything without knowledge of his relationship to Krishna is not as complete in his renunciation. Right. All right. So this is called fogu vairagya. Fogu vairagya, meaning it is described here, what is inferior, inferior renunciation, not actually renunciation. It's not. It's not the real renunciation. So it's described here, they translated it as inferior renunciation, not as complete in his renunciation. So if we give up everything without knowledge of its connection to Krishna, that is not good. And just, oh no, that, no, that's all maya, all maya. We should understand everything in relation to Krishna. So that is proper renunciation. All right. So two kinds of renunciation. How does Prabhupada's mission reflect the principle of yukta vairagya? Prabhupada's yes, mission. Yes. Who's going to comment? Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, like Prabhupada, in uh, means, uh, of course, means what Prabhupada tells in all his literature is to do devotional service, <clears throat> is to do bhakti. Bhakti yoga is the su supreme yoga. So in th this way, what Prabhupada does is, Prabhupada connects us and our entire life with Krishna so that everything is connected and we are happy and this yukta vairagya means connecting Krishna with, the, with our renunciation is happening by Prabhupada. Okay. Yeah, anybody else like to comment? Yes. yes. Well, you see that uh, when Prabhupada is missing, uh, sorry, preaching Krishna consciousness. So, for the preaching purpose, Prabhupada accepted everything like uh, all the technology, aeroplanes, and everything in the service of the Lord. So, Prabhupada mentioned that for the service of uh, Krishna, we can accept anything, but not for our own personal comforts. Okay, very good. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, Prabhupada's mission definitely showed this principle, utilize everything in relation to Krishna. We're not against technology. We're not against material advancement if it's used in relation to Krishna. Hmm? We can build nice temples, we can use technology, we're using technology here. We use it all for the service of Krishna, not for our sense gratification. That's the point. You have a mobile phone, we use it for propagating messages of Krishna, not for watching movies, Bollywood movies and cricket matches and like that. It must be in relation to Krishna. All right, so what we, what we discussed, the importance of the five potent forms of devotional service in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Right? These five items, very important. That's why Prabhupada put them in the morning program. And we identified practices which we could improve. We could improve our sadhana, we could improve our chanting, we could improve going to the holy places, we could improve in many different aspects of our devotional service. And we have explained also about attachment to jnana and vairagya and how it may hinder the progress in bhakti. It may hinder. We have to know how to do everything in relation to Krishna. And that was yukta vairagya. And Prabhupada's mission shows us how to do that, how to utilize everything. Some people, Prabhupada talked about the, the one man, uh, he didn't like to touch money. And he had a picture of him, take, there was a famous picture of him, money was on the table and he wouldn't touch it. He was put his hand, no, no, I didn't want to touch it. But Prabhupada said, this man had a lot of money. He said, under the table he had a lot of money. 
and so much money, but he was pretending that he didn't want to touch money. He said, they can take a picture of me, I will count the money and I will use it all for Krishna, nothing for sense gratification. He said, that man, he had so much money, he, had, he, he was using it, he had piggeries and he had chicken farms and so many things like that, stupid things which he was doing. They were all meat eaters, they were not even vegetarians. You know, and, and they talk about renunciation. So Prabhupada said, we will take all the money and we will use it all for Krishna's service. So that is important. Right? So here's a quote from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Those who are intent on progressing in bhakti should associate with pure devotees. Right? Somebody said that. They wanted to have association with advanced devotees. That was nice. That Bhakti Elias. Prabhu from Germany was telling us he wants to associate with the pure devotees who possess the power to free one from the tendency to fall into bad association. So that's very nice. You get the association of pure devotees and then you won't want to go into bad association again. You stay with the devotees. Right? Here's our Goswamis. You can see they're very renounced. Jai Sangoshwami Prabhu Ki Jai. All right, any questions? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, uh, I just wanted to confirm. Somewhere I heard that uh, before entering into the realm of Yukta Vairagya, one must be, have Vairagya first, and then he can enter into Yukta Vairagya. Is that how far it is? Can you confirm, Maharaj? I've never heard this before. Yukta, you must, in order to have Yukta Vairagya, you have to have devotion for Krishna, you have to be guided by the devotees. You have to have the proper guidance to help you how to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. Okay. That's required. The proper guidance of the devotee will tell you how to use everything in the service of Krishna. Mm. We don't renounce, we don't give up things, we, but we have to learn how to use them for Krishna consciousness. Maybe it is giving up the uh, spirit of uh, enjoyment mentality. Is that how we can practice that? Giving up the spirit of enjoying uh, wealth? Simply by cultivating attach attachment to Krishna. We, we don't give up the spirit of enjoyment, we, we dovetail it to Krishna. Okay. We just change it because we do want to enjoy, and if we don't enjoy, there'll be no impetus, there'll be no pleasure in Krishna consciousness. That's not good. You have to have some pleasure. There has to be some enjoyment there. Everybody wants to enjoy, but we have to experience spiritual enjoyment, enjoyment on the higher platform. So, so that's required, to just change the, the, the quality of the enjoyment from the material to the spiritual. Not giving yes, up. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else has a question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, um, we speak about um, jnana and vairagya making our heart um, harder. But um, in real life situations, sometimes we have to make our heart a bit hard, right? I mean, in, time, in terms of uh, maybe cultivating. Um, uh, you know, in a detachment towards family members. Sometimes we are too attached. So a little bit of hardness of heart is good still, right? I mean, is that the... Is, will that help in our devotional service or um, that is also not good? Well, everything, time, place and circumstances, we have to consider what particular circumstances you're thinking about which you want to be hard <laughs> you know say for example like um, bringing up children um, sometimes being overly attached overly expecting a lot from them uh, you know, that kind of uh, brings uh, you know it affects our spiritual practices also so in that case we develop a little bit of that let go attitude it's okay if you know they don't do the best and if they don't meet up to our expectations. So we have to, and in those circumstances, make our heart, heart a little harder. So 
Is that good is what mm -hmm. I'm wondering? Well, Prabhupada also spoke about his Guru Maharaj. That he said it could be very, very powerful sometimes, you know, you know chastise them. And, <laughs> and we saw Srila Prabhupada also, it could also be quite uh, strong sometimes also. Quite, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could be so hard, soft as a rose and like a thunderbolt, right? It said like yes. that. Lord Chaitanya was like a thunderbolt sometimes. You get this, you know, like uh, Chota Haridas, you know, rejected from the association. and So, <laughs> so everything, there's a time and place for everything. So sometimes you have to be a little hard and Prabhupada would quote Chanaka and the Chanaka said it's the business of the spiritual teacher and the father that they will, they will not flatter the child but they will uh, find the fault and by finding the fault then the child will try to do better, do more, work better. And so maybe like that, you know, that you, you find the fault and that way then the child wants wants to try harder, do better. You don't want to be too flattering and you don't want to make it too easy for them and they'll take advantage. <laughs> so, yes, Maharaj, it's true. <laughs> but, but you have to know, you have to know the balance. Sometimes if, if you get too much, if it's all the time finding a fault, all the time finding, then they get very discouraged. You know? So you, there has to be some time, sometimes where you you encourage them and try to give them confidence. A little difficult, difficult, not easy to be a parent, bring up children. <laughs> not, not, not easy at all, especially in this present society, in these times which we're living. Mm. So, yeah, you can do it, yeah, but not yes, all the time. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinasha. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, one question, one question, one question. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, one more question. Maharaj, this was uh, in connection to attitudes towards suffering. So, Maharaj, when uh, suffering comes in our personal life, then we understand that yes, it is a mistake or past mistakes. Because of that, we are suffering. But then, when we see other devotees suffering, so Maharaj, how we should uh, try to interfere, like, in what way? How we should, should we try to pacify them or how we should uh, deal with them? Oh when yes, yes of course we see other devotees suffering. We, we do want to be compassionate on them and encourage them and try to keep them in Krishna consciousness. That oh. is part of devotee care. Caring for devotees, and devotees are suffering, they're having a difficult time. We should be very personal and caring for them and try to help them and encourage them. We're, we're supposed to be a personal, we have a personal philosophy. And so we, we should not be impersonal, but rather we should be loving and caring, particularly with our devotees. And try to help them in their difficult times. Very... And how we should see that uh, suffering of that devotee? How we should see it? Uh, like, so, because if you will see that, yes, he is suffering from his past misdeeds, then it, it will kind of interfere in our uh, dealing with them. So... Well, of course, we're all suffering because of our karma, and we can also say Krishna's arrangement, and, but generally we say it's our karma, you know? So we're suffering, it's the nature of the material world, there's a lot of suffering there. How to see it? You know, we see it, you know, this is the fruit of our past deeds. So we're getting rid of the karma, you can see this, you're getting rid of the karma. <clears throat> so go on now, yeah. become a good devotee and become strong in Krishna consciousness and don't do anything bad again. <laughs> you, yes, won't, you won't get any bad karma anymore. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Varasana. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Yesterday you said you would tell us today something about the OBA. 
uh, essay questions. Yeah, I didn't get any answer. Did did you did you hear anything from uh, Amber um, Aniruda? No, no, no. Okay, so I have to call him again and find out from him, and we'll get something on the chat for you about that. Okay. Right away. Okay. I'll talk to him right now. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki.